best Bible study is probably one that you've heard before. I'm sure I've done a video on this before, but I needed to remind myself of this story and maybe you need a reminder too. You know, sometimes we need to hear the same things over and over, but we're going to talk about toxic people and how to handle that and the best way to uh, see how to handle certain things in our life is to look to the Bible. Now, people who are toxic, you can have toxic friends, people in your life. Um, you know, if you have toxic friends, so for example, they lead you astray from what God's word says and you end up sinning, you know, as a result of that on a consistent basis. You don't need to be around those people. You don't need to be mean to them or treat them harshly, but you also don't need to spend lots of time with them. If you don't, if you can't resist being like the world when you're hanging out with people of the world, then you don't need to be hanging out with them. And I've said before, it's okay to have non-Christian friends because, you know, how are we supposed to be an influence to people who don't know Jesus if we're not around them? But if they are causing you to sin, then you need to put some distance between you and them until you are stronger in faith and can resist that and still stand firm in your faith while being around those people. Um, if you have uh, toxic people in your life, so people who have hurt you on the other hand, we're gonna talk more so about that. Unfortunately, um, I, I forgive people, but I replay bad moments in my mind all the time. You know, things that people have done or said to me or about me, I just play it in my head over and over and over. And it, I just, it's, it's terrible. It's a terrible thing that I do to myself. And one thing to note that if someone has wronged you, we are called to forgive. In Matthew 18, 21 through 22, Jesus says that we are to forgive, you know, as many times as someone needs or asks for forgiveness. And if you need uh, more assistance on forgiving, watch the video after this one. I have an entire video on forgiveness that I will link in the description box and I'll put in the cards. So as humans, we think that we should only forgive a certain amount of times or maybe not at all. But really, it doesn't matter how many times someone calls you to it doesn't matter how many times someone has done something to you, we are to forgive. There's no stipulation on that. And we forgive because God has forgiven us. Think about it. Jesus, who is God in the flesh, came down to earth. He left beautiful, amazing heaven to come down here with us on this earth, to walk this earth and to struggle and to feel what we feel. To, to die, to be put to death in order to forgive our sins. So we are to forgive because God forgave us. So we're gonna look at John 13, chapter one. Jesus washes his disciples' feet, and I'll read it to you. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Issachar, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor his messenger greater than the one who sent him. 
Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. I like how this scripture prepares us. It, it allows us to see what Jesus was knowing and what he was feeling. Verse 1, it says that Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave. So he knew that he was about to die. Verse 3, Jesus knew the Father had put all things under his power. Um, verse 3, verse 2, um, the devil had already prompted Judas to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew this. And Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and that he was returning to God. So even though Jesus knew he was about to die, he knew he was about to be betrayed. Verse 3 says that he also knew that his Father had put all things under his power that he had come from God and returned to God. So Jesus knew his purpose here, and that is extremely impactful. When we know what we are here for, and this is something, like I've said, that I've had to refocus on, we are here to serve God. We are here because, you know, God has all power. We, have, we come from God and we are eventually going to return to God and because of that I think when people hurt us you know initially we are human of course we will be hurt we will be sad but remembering that we are here to serve God I think can help to quickly forgive and to quickly move on and move past that hurt not only did Jesus um, already know what was going to happen he had trusted God with his plan but it said after he had thought about all this, in verse 5, after that, he poured water into a basin and he started washing their feet. So Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed. And instead of calling out Judas, right, he didn't tell the other disciples. He could have easily said, now he did say in verse 21 in the same chapter, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. So he did say that, but he didn't say who, right? So it's not like Jesus went around and told everyone Judas is going to betray me and he's he knew this he's known this you know he's God he is God in the flesh he knew that Judas was going to do that um, but instead of you know telling all the disciples it's going to be Judas and watch out for Judas or causing some sort of uproar or um, having unforgiveness or bitterness against Judas he washes his feet and that's something that I want to remember. When faced with hurt and pain that someone has brought to me, I can in turn serve them, forgive them. When someone hurts me, the best thing that I can do is to forgive and serve. And honestly, forgiveness is so much more for yourself and for your own mental health than it is for them. Yes, it is for them as well, because if they see that you forgive them, you know, regardless of what they've done for you, or even if they don't see that, it, it's just, it's helpful for your soul. It keeps your soul at peace. But like I said before, it's important for us to remember our purpose. Jesus said that he was setting an example for us. He is Lord, and it says that in verse 13, I am teacher and Lord and rightly so, but now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. And that's what we are here for. We are not here for our own purpose, for our own desires, but instead to serve one another. In verse 17, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So I just would like to pray for you right now. Father, you know, the hearts of each and every person listening to this video today. God, I just pray that you help them to heal and forgive and to serve one another, even those who have hurt them, especially those who have hurt them. And God, I pray that you strengthen them throughout this time, that you allow us to refocus on you and remember what our true purpose here is on earth. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for forgiving us, for giving us your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so I know this was quick, and like I said, I'm pretty sure I've done a Bible study on this exact topic before, <laughs> but you know, it doesn't hurt to do it again. Um, but please share with me what you learned, 
Also, please subscribe if you haven't yet already. Um, I post a new Bible study Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go and make peace. Forgive. Even if you, the person that hurt you, even if they're not here anymore, if you can't talk to them anymore, you just forgive them in your own mind. If you have to go talk to someone verbally and say, I forgive you, make peace. Go and make peace. Um, and I can't wait to study the Bible with you again. Bye.